The goal of this video is to make your game look incredible while also maintaining the most amount of FPS possible. And we're starting here under the graphic settings under the quality tab. Make sure that your render resolution is set to 100 and then your upscaling slash sharpening. We want this at Fidelity FX Cast. And then we're going to click show more and put the strength up to 75. Some of you might be wondering why we don't use NVIDIA DLSS or AMD FSR. And while yes, those do give you a significant boost to FPS as you can see here on screen the only issue with using one of those two settings is that the image is upscaled from a lower resolution making the game look a lot more blurry and it really really affects visibility especially at those longer distances but if you're getting ridiculously low FPS even after this video I mean it is something you could try and then for anti-aliasing in the past normally you want to play on the lowest settings since it gives you the most amount of FPS but there's a problem in this game which you can see here on the screen you can see all these little black dots all over this wall here and it, it just looks absolutely disgusting that is because anti-aliasing is on the lower setting here but if we change it to filmic smaat2x and then put anti-aliasing quality to normal it really minimizes that effect but you do lose a few fps but in my opinion that few fps is worth it because that little effect is just absolutely terrible and it makes the game look disgusting but another downside to putting your anti-aliasing up is it really hurts your visibility in the distance which is obviously going to be a problem in warzone so you have to kind of decide do you want to get rid of that effect or really minimize that effect or do you not care about that effect and really want to maximize your fps and visibility because if you don't care about that effect being minimized i would put the anti-aliasing here to smaat2x and then put anti-aliasing quality down the low so you're gonna have to kind of decide for yourself right there video memory scale i do have this turned all the way up now if you are experiencing any sort of stutters in game definitely try turning this down a little bit moving down to texture resolution i want the game to look good and i want to get a high amount of fps so i'm putting texture resolution at high now not all of you guys are going to be able to do this if you look here down in the bottom right it's going to say estimated vram usage if this bar is red or going over the little line for your max amount of VRAM, you're going to want to turn down texture resolution. So if your graphics card can handle running it on high, I'd recommend doing so as obviously running texture resolution on high looks the best. But if your VRAM usage is higher than the amount of VRAM your graphics card has, as indicated by that bar, then turn this down until it is not going over the amount of VRAM your graphics card can handle. And then for texture filter anisotropic, we do have this set to high as well nearby level of detail we also have set to high and then distant level of detail we have this set to low flutter draw distance is set to short particle quality we want this set to high and then particle quality level set to very low this is very important scrolling down we have bullet impacts and sprays turned on and then shader quality is a really big performance hog but there's a problem with shader quality so if you set this to low as seen here your gold camo is going to look like mustard it's not going to look right but then again you're getting about 25 to 30 more fps here but if you put shader quality to medium or high gold camo just looks absolutely beautiful here the only downside is you're losing out on a lot of fps i personally think the difference between medium and high is negligible so if you want your camos to look really really good i would put it on medium i don't think there's really any reason to put this on high but if you don't really care how your camos look i would put this on low because you're gonna gain about 25 to 30 fps which is absolutely huge so you're gonna have to decide for yourself here which setting is going to work the best for you one thing i should mention about shader quality is you will have to reset your game for the setting to take effect so once you're done with all the settings here make sure you reset your game and then shaders are going to have to reinstall so just make sure you let that go through and then tessellation we have this turned off terrain memory we have this set to medium and then on-demand texture streaming is turned off scrolling down a bit more we got streaming quality here which we want set to normal volumetric quality we want this set to medium deferred physics quality we want this set to low and then water caustics we want this turned off and then shadow map resolution normally i would recommend putting this on low or very low but i've noticed every time you reset the game it just resets to normal so at this point in time i would recommend just leaving it at normal because it's gonna drive you nuts screen space shadows i 
have this set to high. Putting this on high is going to make the details on your gun look absolutely incredible. And I've noticed really no difference in the FPS between putting this on high, low, or off. And then spot shadow quality, we want this on low. Spot cache, we want this on low. Particle lighting, we have this set to normal. Ambient occlusion is turned off. Screen space reflections is turned off. Static reflection quality and weather grid volumes are both low and off. Scrolling down to the bottom here, we have Nvidia reflex low latency turned on. And then the rest of these settings here, we want all turned off and film grain turned down to zero. You don't want any of this motion blur or depth of field in your game. It's just going to destroy your visibility. Moving on over to the view tab. Now your field of view is really going to be personal preference, but do make sure that your ADS field of view is set to affected as this is going to help you with your recoil control just immensely. Weapon field of view. We do want this set to wide. It's going to make your weapon appear smaller and again, make it a little easier to control recoil. And then third person field of view is personal preference. I have it set to 90. Vehicle field of view i have this set to default and then these are very important here you want your first and third person camera movement set to least so your camera is not moving around as much during gameplay third person ads transition this is really going to be personal preference when the third person mode does come out but i had this set to third person just from playing multiplayer when i played the game mode the one time but i think for warzone 2 probably switching this to first person ads is going to be for the best and that default spectator camera i put this to game perspective if you put this to helmet camera just spectating is going to look absolutely nauseating moving over to the display tab now as always i recommend you guys play in full screen exclusive you're going to get the least amount of input like possible just double check your display monitor and display adapter are both set correctly they should be by default and as well as your screen refresh rate make sure this is set to the refresh rate of your monitor i don't want you guys playing in 60 hertz when you have 144 hertz or higher display so please make sure that's set correctly and and then display resolution, you know, just make sure this is all set correctly. And then dynamic resolution, we do want this turned off. Aspect ratio, we have this set to automatic. And then V-Sync for both gameplay and menus, we want these this turned off. I know this can fix screen tearing, but it adds a lot of input lag. And we do not want that in an FPS game. And then custom frame rate limit, I do have this set to custom. And then I click show more. And I put the gameplay custom frame rate limit all the way up. And then I left the menu custom frame rate limit at 120s, just so the menus are a little smooth but you could put this down to 60 and then out of focus custom frame rate limit this is just if you're tabbed out of the game so it doesn't really matter now if you do use g-sync you're gonna want to make sure that your gameplay custom frame rate limit is three below whatever the hertz of your monitor is so if you have a 240 hertz monitor you'd want 237 144 hertz monitor you'd want to put 141 but that is only for the people out there who want to use g-sync otherwise just turn this all the way up scrolling down here we have display gamma which we put on 2.2 if you're playing on a gaming monitor if you are playing on a tv just any sort of like big screen tv or anything you could try 2.4 and it's probably going to look a little better for you and then brightness is self-explanatory you just click it and you adjust the slider so the middle is barely visible which is default for me and then focus mode we do want this turned off although this could be helpful if you do play on an ultra wide monitor and then high dynamic range or hdr we do want this turned off if you're playing on a gaming monitor there is really no gaming monitors out there that have good hdr but if you do have your pc connected to like an oled tv or some sort of really nice tv you would want to turn it on in that situation but please if you are playing on a gaming monitor turn this off it's just, it's gonna look absolutely terrible unless you got that new alienware ultra wide that's oled or whatever moving over to the interface tab here now we have color customization here which we are going to come back to because this is very important but i just want to scroll down here because because if you notice how some streamers, including myself, their HUD is kind of squeezed in. This is how you change that here is by turning down the vertical and horizontal HUD bounds. A lot of people do this because there's a lot of important information on your HUD. And a lot of people are switching over to those bigger 27 inch 1440p monitors. And if you're one of those people, you want to have your HUD closer to center of the screen. So it's easier to see without, you know, moving your head all over the place to see it. Minimap shape. We want this on square. I can't remember if this was on round by default, but we do want it on square. And then if we scroll down here to telemetry, you can set this to custom and then click show more. And this is how you put all the stuff in the top left hand corner of your screen, like FPS counter, your latency, anything you want up there. You can check that here to put it up there. Scrolling down a bit more, we want to turn this on where it says 
does skip introduction movies. So you don't have to see that every time you open the game. It's kind of annoying. And then something that could help you with your centering is turning the center dot on and then setting your center dot scale to larger, which is what I'm personally doing. I think it helps me with my centering. So I definitely recommend testing that setting out. But let's go back up to the top here to color customization because this is very important. For color filter, we want to set this to filter two and then color filter target. We want to set it to both. And then we have world color intensity and interface color intensity both set all the way up to 100. Now, this isn't the only thing you want to do for your color customization. We're also going to be changing the color settings in the NVIDIA control panel. And once you combine the NVIDIA control panel color settings with these color filter settings, it's just the game looks absolutely beautiful. But one little tip for you guys playing multiplayer still, if you see enemy right here, just click on that and turn the saturation and the brightness of it all the way up. And it's going to be a lot easier to see that little red or uh, red square above your enemy's head. So I know that is something I did didn't have in the MW2 settings video. But for the NVIDIA control panel color settings, we're going to bring that over here and you're going to want to copy these down. Now, keep in mind, everyone's monitor is different, right? So these settings might look a little too saturated for your monitor. And if that's the case, just turn your digital vibrance down a little bit. But 75% looks perfect on my monitor. If you don't know how to get to the NVIDIA control panel, if you do have an NVIDIA graphics card, you just right click your desktop and then click NVIDIA control panel. But we will be going over the rest of the NVIDIA control panel settings later in the video. I just want to quickly show you guys my audio settings. Now, headphone bass boost is what I've heard to be the best. Now, obviously the game literally just came out, so I haven't gone through and tested audio settings to find the best ones yet, but this is what I'm personally using right now. We will in the future be going through and testing all the different audio settings. So make sure you click that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the updated settings. Now scrolling down, a lot of these are just gonna be personal preference and are really gonna depend on your PC, but this is what all my settings are. One thing I do like to do is change the hit marker sound effect to classic. I just, I love the sound of the old school MW2 hit markers. And then this little setting right here can uh, help you out if you know you have tendonitis, if I hopefully I said that right, but this game is extremely loud. So if you have hearing issues, then I would probably recommend turning this on and I might do so myself because my ears ring a lot at night. <laughs> now we'll be going over all the best controller settings and best mouse and keyboard settings in a separate video. So again, make sure you click the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all that. If we do all that in this video, that it's just going to be way too long, but we're going to close out of our game now and click quit to death desktop. Now do make sure that you applied all your settings and we're going to be right clicking our desktop and opening up the NVIDIA control panel. And we're going to be starting here at the top under manage 3D settings. Now these settings right here can reset to default when you do update your drivers, depending on the settings you choose when you update your drivers. So do keep that in mind when you are updating drivers. Now the best NVIDIA driver at the moment is the latest one, but I do know there is a lot of people out there who have been having issues with that driver. And if you are one of those people, you could try using the program DDU to completely uninstall your driver. And then you could download 522.25, which in my experience has been a great driver and I didn't have any stability issues with it. But if you're having no issues, no stuttering issues, no crashing issues, none of that just don't mess with your drivers, just leave them. But I'm just gonna scroll through all these 3D settings here for you guys and just make sure you copy them down and then we'll move on to the next tab, which is change resolution. Just make sure that you have your native resolution selected here and your correct refresh rate selected. You don't wanna be playing on 60 Hertz when you have a high refresh rate monitor and then scroll down and you're gonna wanna click on use NVIDIA color settings here and you're gonna wanna change output dynamic range to full. On the left, we have adjust desktop color settings, which is where you find the color settings that I mentioned earlier in the video and we already covered this so I'm not going to go through all this but then we're going to click on adjust desktop size and position if you're having no issues with your games at all just leave this set to what it is but if you are having any issues with any of the games you play this isn't just warzone you could try selecting no scaling here or even full screen could help fix some of your issues we're going to be skipping g-sync because I personally don't recommend using g-sync if you're playing an fps 
test game. And then we're going to click on adjust video color settings here. I have this set to with NVIDIA settings. And then I click on advanced on this tab down here and switch the dynamic range to full. And then we can click out of the NVIDIA control panel there. Just don't forget to apply your settings. And then we're going to open up Google Chrome. This only goes for the people that do use Google Chrome, but open it up. And in the top right hand corner, you're going to see the three little dots. So click on that and then click on settings on the left side here. You're going to want to click on system and then make sure you uncheck this right here where it says continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed. Otherwise, Google Chrome is going to be running in the background when you're gaming. And obviously we don't want that because it hurts performance, which leads me into background apps. So if you just go to your search bar in Windows and type background, you'll see background apps pop up here. So we're going to click on that and you're going to want to make sure this is checked off right here where it says let apps run in the background because again, all these programs will be running in the background when you have your game open, which hurts performance. You can go to the search bar right here in the top left and we're going to just search game and then you're going to see game mode settings pop up right here. So we're going to click on that and you want to turn game mode on. On the right side, you're going to see graphic settings. So we're going to want to click on that. And you're going to want to turn this on where it says hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. If you are a streamer or you're just recording videos with OBS on the same PC that you're gaming on, you don't want to turn this on. So do keep that in mind. We're going to click back and then we're going to go to Xbox game bar and make sure this is turned off. We're going to go to captures and make sure everything under here is turned off. And then we're going to go back up to the search bar here in the top left and we're going to search power and you're going to see power and sleep settings pop up there. Now, when your screen turns off or goes to sleep mode or whatever, this is all personal preference here. What we're looking for is the additional power settings here on the right side. So we're clicking that and it'll bring this menu up. And what you're going to want to do is switch it to high performance. If you don't see high performance, it might be under the under this little drop down here. So make sure you check under there and then you are good to go there. You can close out of that. Now, before we do move on, I want to remind you guys that I do stream Monday through Saturday morning slash afternoon times. So if this video is helping you out in any way, shape or form, please consider dropping a follow over there and just saying what's up in chat. I'd really appreciate it. Link is at the top of the description. But if this video helped you out, make sure you click the subscribe button. I will be updating these settings every single season because it's day one of Warzone right now. So the best settings right now aren't going to be the best settings in a few months. I'll always be keeping you guys up to date with the best possible settings for the game to make your guys this experience as good as possible. Make sure you drop a like on the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Here's the web. Peace.